Huge is Bitcoin currently testing the very bottom of this rising wedge after seemingly falling through it overnight? And if so, could Bitcoin be heading down to a key level that we've been talking about for a few days now? And as well, if Bitcoin pierces the center of this seeming ascending channel over the last week, what is the target to the downside? Wow, and Bitcoin is only hours away from yet another weekly close. What key level do we want to look for? And can we expect some very increased volatility in T minus? five hours when we get that weekly close for Bitcoin. And as we pointed out days ago, guys, this bearish divergence is very real and the target to the downside is something we definitely wanna look at. But is Bitcoin 100% headed to the downside or is there a bullish scenario to look for? Let's jump in. Welcome back, charters, barters, and late night charters. Guys, we've got a lot to be jumping into in this weekly webisode for Bitcoin. We're gonna be getting that weekly close and that's absolutely something we're gonna watch. But a position that we've been talking about for the past few days finally looks like it is culminating. And currently, we're testing a key level just outside of that pattern. So we're going to be talking about that and what the targets are for that. And as well, is it absolutely improbable now at this point that Bitcoin will now get a break to the upside? Or as we've talked about, after this 50% run up since the last time we've had this 21 going above the 50 day cross that we've gotten three other times in 2020, is this destined to be a dumpage down to the downside that we're going to be talking about that specific target? Or will we defy reality and absolutely moonshot to oblivion? Huge guys, so if you're new to the channel as well as always, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you get updated when we upload these dirty dumpages. And as well guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure as always to leave your comment below so you can enter for the sledge episodes, equivalent in BTC, or access to T4. And as well guys, we're going to be doing a big special giveaway at 50k, so as well, make sure to subscribe. Massive! So a rising wedge is a bearish reversal pattern, typically guys. So uh, different from a symmetrical triangle, which has no definitive slope or uh, bullish or bearish bias, meaning uh, as we've talked about, symmetrical triangles are basically neutral. There's not a bias to the upside or a downside. However, they do tend to be continuation patterns. Uh, this is considered a reversal pattern and it typically is bearish. So if we jump into this chart here, what we have so far seemingly on the four hour chart for Bitcoin is something that we've been watching for quite a while. And as of yesterday, now we have cemented some very interesting touches along this bottom trend line. However, now it looks as though we're trading on the opposite side of this trend line. So we had multiple touches within this seeming uh, rising wedge where we actually had charted on here an ascending triangle which tried to break out and you can see immediately where it faced resistance along this line here kind of came back into this has been testing basically on the exact level of where this ascending triangle was holding before it tried to break out here just a few days ago uh, but it does look like it's failing now but we're holding this key level about 15.9 uh, but for the most part, guys, if we breach below this level right here, about 15.8 at the lowest, then I think it is likely we're going to get a completion of this bearish scenario here. Uh, and the target actually of this can be all the way down the least significant target around 14.5, so 14,500. But there is the chance we go visit some other targets, which we're going to be talking about as well. But for the most part, touch on the top, bottom, then kind of in the middle here, but mainly 15.8. Uh, retouch at the bottom and then again retouch again at the bottom uh, and then again still finding that resistance around 15.8 another retouch at the bottom then all the way up here to about 16.4 or about 16.5 and yet again another retest and guys as you can see we're kind of slowly floating out of this area of support and the only reason we're hanging on is because of this blue uh, box right here this blue horizontal resistance. However, again, if we break through this at the lowest being about 15,800 US dollars, I think we're actually going to swing to the downside. Now, as we talked about yesterday as well, we've gotten this bullish cross three other times in the year 2020. And after every single time we've gotten a bullish cross, we've gotten at least a 30% pump. And after every single one of those 30% pumps, we've gotten at least uh, a move minimum down back to the 21 day moving average. But every single time also we've gotten then a bearish cross where the 50 day then goes above the uh, 21 day, right? So we have a bullish cross here and then we have a bearish cross, right? And then we have a bullish cross here and then we have a bearish cross. 
and we have a bullish cross here. Now, the only two differences so far is that we have not yet had a bearish cross. You know, who knows if we will for sure, even if we come down, doesn't necessarily mean we will at all. But as well, another key thing is that we actually have not come down to the 21 day moving average, which is something we talk about and that happened all three other times. Actually, uh, yeah, three other times in the year 2020. So while I do think it is likely we're going to go down to at least 14.5 at some point and as well very likely even down a little bit below 14,000, I don't necessarily think that that guarantees we're going to have a bearish cross on the daily. And the reasoning for that is that uh, we're going to be shifting into a more bullish market in my opinion, right? So even though a pullback is necessary, even on this weekly chart, which we talked about and getting this weekly close, this is going to actually bring this up again, probably over above 12,000 does not mean that we are going to have to get a bearish cross. Like like we just talked about, meaning the 50 going above the 21 day. So although I'm 100% anticipating a move to at least 14,000, most likely even lower than that over the next few weeks, uh, and it looks to be shaping up even sooner than that, although I'm anticipating that, I am not necessarily anticipating that it will be so prolonged that we actually get yet another bearish cross, but it is something we wanna watch out for there. And as well, guys, we've been talking about this bearish divergence for days now, and uh, yeah, it looks like we probably will get this to play out. Uh, it has happened numerous times. This is a very significant one, in my opinion. It is on the daily chart. It's not just a one or four hour uh, bearish divergence there. Uh, and we are extremely overextended, in my opinion. So again, just more things lining up uh, that make it seem more likely here. And then as well, this uh, rising channel that we have been in for about 10 days now as well. Uh, I personally think this, uh, again, it just looks as though more likely a move to the downside. The lowest level of support of this, roughly about 15.5, which again, we talk about 15.5 a lot, specifically on this chart. Uh, and if we break 15.5, then again, I 100% think we're gonna climax and actually come all the way down to at least, in my opinion, at least 14,000, but even 13.5 is more likely. So again, this is something I think is going to start playing out immediately. Uh, we've already seen it start playing out, but I think it's gonna actually peak uh, definitely this coming week, right? So during this work week upcoming, I think we're gonna have a significant drop. It's just what everything is showing. Uh, there is still a possibility we could have one final pump to above 17K, but as every single day has gone on, it's become less and less likely in my opinion. And as well, that lines up with this six month ascending chart as well, ascending channel, right down to this level, guys, this is what I'm eyeing up, which you notice as well, this is below the 21 day moving average, right about 14.8. Uh, so again, I am anticipating we go below the 21 day moving average, but ultimately uh, bounce and kind of get back above it again. So, but ultimately I do think we're going to at least wick on a weekly chart down to, uh, again, I'm looking at that like 13.5 area as a quick wick. But again, some people are more bearish than that. But I, one of the reasons I think that this would be sufficient in terms of a pullback, which would be less drastic than the last three times we've had it is again, guys, because we're shifting more into a much more bullish environment. So even though we're going to be getting pullbacks, the pullbacks are not going to be as bad as they were in 2018, 19, and most of 2020, in my opinion. I just think that that's how the market sentiment is shifting because we have to incorporate the macro long-term view and the macro stance of the market not just these daily, you know, one in four, six hour charts. Huge, so guys, as always, make sure to leave your comment below to enter for those sludge episodes. And as well, guys, if you're interested in trading, if you have experience trading and you wanna support the channel, make sure to sign up with our link below. Currently, limited time up to an additional $610 uh, for trading on Bybit when you deposit those specific amounts. The description and the comments have all of the info you need.